Day 2, Elk City, Oklahoma to Amarillo, Texas. Well, it seems I had made a good decision about not camping. There were thunderstorms most of the night, and the motel room was cozy, nice, and dry. I began the day with a tour of the National Route 66 Museum in Elk City. This is fairly new and is not on many Route 66 guides. I only found out about it because I saw the signs on the highway. This museum was combined with the town's Old Town Museum. In addition to a museum of Route 66 related items, there was an old time city square with buildings reflective from times past. This is Myrtle at the National Museum. This is part of the Old Town Museum. And this is the City Square Courtyard at the National Museum. After touring the museums, I headed onward in quest of Route 66. Just out of Elk City, following this old Route 66, I came upon this bridge. I tried to walk some of the bridge and determined that without a chainsaw, I was going to have a lot of trouble getting through. Trees and brush had grown thick and now it was starting to rain again, so I had to backtrack to town and find an alternate route. This is just another section of that old bridge. By the time I reached Eric, Oklahoma, I found the famous Sand Hills Curiosity Shop home of Harley and Annabelle, the mediocre music makers. This place looks like it could have been the inspiration for Lizzie's place uh, in the Cars movie. Har Harley and Annabelle weren't there uh, when I passed by, so I couldn't ask them or see their dance routine. Kind of a bummer. So I sat on the front porch. Oh well, guess maybe I'll just have to watch them on one of the DVDs on Route 66 that my brother had given me for Christmas last year. Forging ahead in the drizzle, I crossed back into Texas and cut across the Panhandle portion of Route 66. By the time I reached Shamrock, Texas, I located this old restored conical station called the Tower Station, now owned and operated by the city of Shamrock and now contains a small gift shop. Good thing too, because by the time I got here, not only was it raining hard, but it was in the middle of, uh, I was in the middle of a lightning storm. And if need, I can ride in the rain, but one feels a little vulnerable on a motorcycle when lightning is striking all around you. So I spent an extended time here waiting for the storm to pass. Still a light rain, but the lightning has now passed, so I continue on my journey. Right next to the tower station was the U-Drop Inn. During my extended stay at the station, the older lady that ran the gift shop explained to me that because a federal grant was used to restore this cafe, it cannot be used as a restaurant or anything commercial, so it is currently used to host community meetings. She had also told me that when she grew up here in Shamrock, and when she was a teenager, this was a popular place to hang out with the kids, and they frequently had sock hops in the dance hall between the station and the cafe. By the time I got to McLean, the rain had let up for a bit, so I stopped at the Devil's Road Museum. This was billed as a tribute to barbed wire. At first, I was going to pass. A barbed wire museum sounded kind of dumb, but I decided I'd quick take a quick tour. I'm glad I did. It was actually very interesting, and I would highly recommend it as a good place to tour. It was more about the struggles to fence property and the break away from the days of the open range. Lots of bloody gunfights over this issue. The tour guide there told me his name was Bob Ware, and oh, they also had a Route 66 museum. On the west side of McLean, I found this vintage service station that dates back to 1927, when
Edwards construction began, built in a typical cottage fashion. This station was the first Route 66 to be built outside of Oklahoma, which was Phillips' uh, headquarters. The station was completed in 1928, and for the next 50 years it would serve travelers along Route 66, operated under various owners and product brands. However, like many businesses, McLean, when I-40 bypassed the town, the business failed. It sat neglected and abandoned until the old Route 66 Association of Texas renovated it in 1992. Past McLean, I attempted to follow a pre-1937 route. This was, however, not just a dirt road. It was a muddy, red dirt road. I dismounted and walked it a bit to see how slippery it was. Well, after I slipped and fell down in the mud, I decided I was not going to do it on a motorcycle today. So back to the pavement I went. Outside of Groom, one can find a lean and water tower, which currently serves as a decorative item. It originally was a functioning water tower which was slated for demolition until Ralph Britton bought it and moved it to serve as a sign for his truck stop and tourist information center. The truck stop is no more, but the water tower remains. Also near Groom is this huge cross. This 190 foot tall freestanding cross can be seen from 20 miles away. Standing at the base of the cross are life-size statues of the Stations of Christ. Just past the cross and groom, following an old pre-1937 route, I came upon this sign. It's raining again and I didn't even bother to examine the road. I went in search of pavement. Many have heard about the famous Cadillac Ranch outside of Amarillo, but there is a lesser known Slugbug Ranch outside of Conway, Texas. It is five Volkswagen bugs buried nose down in a ground similar to the style of the Cadillac Ranch. I finally arrive at the Big Texan Restaurant in Amarillo. This is home of the free 72 ounce steak. After a day of riding in the rain, I was sure hungry and gave some thought to ordering that free 72 ounce steak. There is a catch, however. You have to be able to eat the steak with all the trimmings including salad and baked potato within one hour. If you succeed in that task, you become famous and the meal is free. If you fail, the bill for your dinner is $72. I decided to order a regular sized steak, but it was sure good and exactly what I needed after a long day in a wet saddle. Next door is a big Texan motel, where I corralled my steed and bunked for the night.